Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger, and it's time to take a look at another champion build video. Today I am playing as Olaf in the top lane. Uh, like Olaf a lot for the top lane. He is a great, great uh, laner up there because of some of the damage and the utility that he has. As you can see right there when I used my Reckless Swing, which does some great damage to the enemy. We're going to talk about more of that too. But uh, he's also a very strong jungler as well, and I like playing him there. But today I'm playing him in the top lane because lately I've made a lot of jungling build videos. So I thought I'd show you a jungler that I do play top lane. So uh, I got a little bit of Olaf at... First, in the game, at level 1, I like to build Boots and Pots. It's, like I said, the safe bet usually when you're going to pretty much any lane nowadays. Boots and Pots is a good way to go. Here, I am actually letting Jace push me a little bit because he has a little bit of range on me, um, at least in an advantage where he can stay in that AD carry style mode. And he can poke at me if he wants to. Now, during this game, he doesn't utilize that quite enough. So, that is kind of unfortunate for him, and it's going to put him into a bad position in a little bit after I start getting some kills. So, first off, Amumu is going to come top, and we're going to start to get into a fight here. Now, Amumu is not going to use the stun immediately because we don't need to when we can just be on top of him. Now, Amumu is going to try to use it. We're going to get that off. I'm going to ignite him, hit him one more time, and one more time to throw my uh, undertow to hit him for the first blood kill. Nice, easy pickup for us up here. I'll kind of let him push because I knew my Amumu would be ready to gank around this level because I know this ganker. I know this Amumu. I'm playing with him. So uh, we kind of set that up, and that was a good way to go. Now here, Fiddlesticks is going to come cover this lane for a little bit because of uh, Jace being dead, and Fiddlesticks is their enemy jungler. I'm just going to have Amumu come back up here, see if we can maybe bait out the fiddlesticks or see if we can do anything to him. One good way to start this is by throwing that undertow which I just did to slow him which gets Amumu in range and that's gonna help Amumu pick up this kill. So um, nice easy kill for Amumu for us there as well. Um, like I was saying at the beginning of the game as you saw me use my reckless swing to hit that Jace to deal some of my true damage. Um, I do like to take reckless swing actually at level 1 because of the damage it does do. So I do do that that's fun. Uh, which is also going to be the first thing that I do max out completely to level 5, which is the Reckless Swing. And if you do not know about it, like I said, it does the true damage and it costs a part of your health. So basically it does true damage to you to use it. But it's totally worth it and it hurts the enemy team, um, at least the player, oh, just outrageously. It's a great thing to max out as your first thing. At level 2 though, I do take his Undertow, which allows me to chuck out one of my axes. If it hits him, it deals damage and it does slow them. Basically, every time I hit them with one of those and I'm in a decent position, I'll run after them, throw it at them like this, and use an immediate reckless swing. It's a great way to do that. Here, my ultimate is up. I'm going to use that to get rid of some of that slow because, as we all know, Olaf's ultimate, Ragnarok, Ragnarok, it's uh, going to give you armor penetration. It ignores uh, CC or breaks it, and then for six seconds, you're immune to disables and you have increased armor and magic resist. So kind of just a great tanky buff that allows you to kind of ignore some CC or some disables that are just going to be annoying if you need to close the gap and get to an important target or just to the target that you're trying to kill. Um, these last few times I've gone back to base, I did pick up my first few items. I did pick up a um, phage, which is going to be one of my first items. It's going to give me a little bit of damage, and it's going to help me get tankier and allow me to have a little bit of an option to try to get that slow off. And then, obviously, I do pick up wards to keep warding top. Always ward top. It's your own fault if you get ganked and you do not have a ward. You need to pay attention and pick up some wards. And then in this game, I decided to go with attack speed boots. Um, boots on him are kind of a personal choice. There's lots of different ones you could get. If you need the uh, Ninja Tabby, you can get those. If you need Merc Treads, you can get those. There's really a lot of choices you can go with. If you want Boots 3 for just better chasing, you can do that as well. But I kind of address some of this early on with the Rune Page choice that I go with. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But um, as for Boots, you can kind of go with whatever suits your need. I decided to go with a little bit of attack speed. And this is going to help me in a few ways. But uh, I don't really have to worry about that too much because of my passive, which is Berserker Rage. Basically, for every 1% of health you're missing, you gain 1% attack speed. So, as you get lower in a fight on health, you will keep increasing your attack speed, and that is very nice. Now, here is a classic point in case of Jace knew I was around, and he shouldn't have came even anywhere near. He should have gone back. He should have known that could have killed him. And here's the classic fiddlestick mistake, or fiddlesticks mistake, where he thinks that he can kill me by himself when it's an Olaf who does true damage and really could care less about anything that he does. So... That's kind of what Olaf does. He gets into certain situations where he just doesn't have to care about damage because of his ultimate, when he can avoid their CC. He gets the buffs that just kind of help him get tanky. And that true damage 
allows him to not have to really build damage items. You can do damage regardless. So um, it does help to build some damage items as well. But I like to build a tankier Olaf. And that's going to help me, you know, be tanky for the team. It'll help me get the targets that are high priority without melting before I even get to them. So it's just a couple of interesting ways you can go about things. Um, as for that last time back, as you can see, I did pick up a giant's belt. I'm going to be teaming that up with my phase to be building a frozen mallet, which is going to give me a lot of CC for myself, more of a slow. I'll be able to chase a lot better if I need to chase down a target. And uh, it's just going to help me overall too, because it's going to give me life, which is also going to team up with my uh, vicious strikes, which is this W ability. I do take it at level three. I do typically max it last or second, just depending, but taking undertow and maxing that out second is usually nice because the slow and it does hit pretty hard for some decent damage and poke in the game while you're laning. But like I was saying, Vicious Strike, the damage is increased when you activate it based on the amount of life you have. So you'll do more damage if you have more life. So building a little bit of life on Olaf is never a bad thing. And there are other builds that do do more life than him. Here, I'm just going to hit him with that, slow him down, ignite him, and basically hit him with a reckless swing to end him. And he was around a little below half-life, but it really doesn't take much to kill someone if they're not stacking any life against Olaf. Now, one way I will say you can counter Olaf is to build items that give you health. I know building some armor would not be a bad idea as well, but if you build more health, that way his reckless thing will be less devastating to you. But if you're not building any items with health, the reckless thing is just going to just tear you apart being that it's true damage. So that's something that you need to think about when you are versing an Olaf. It's just kind of the only way to negate some of his damage. Um, as you can see, the last time I did go back to, I did pick up some armor. That's going to just help negate even more damage that Jace is doing to me. I'm kind of immediately counter-building him. And this is how I usually do it when I'm in top lane because it's smart. Here I do run into Fiddlesticks because he is trying to steal our blue buff. I'm going to try to chase after him. I'm going to hit him with a slow there. Unfortunately, he is going to kind of uh, kind of juke me for a split second. I use my ultimate here just try to uh, try to see if I was going to get knocked away by the... Um, what you call the Gragas, which he did try to stun me there, slow me with real quick with a body slam, but it showed that I could not be disabled for that second. There I was going to reckless swing Jace, but unfortunately I was not able to. Here I'm going to hit him with a slow, and that's going to put Amumu just in range to be able to get out um, that bandage toss and grab him, which is going to be a great way for me to pick up another assist and kill. Got six kills so far and a couple assists, farming really well. Um, Olaf's good at that. If you did not know, with his Vicious Strikes, Olaf, when he does activate that, it does give him lifesteal. So, don't really need to build lifesteal on Olaf. You have it built in, which is nice. So, you can get your life back that way in lane. Or while you're fighting, it's a great way just to kind of negate some damage. Here, we're just going to find their uh, Fiddlesticks hanging out in bushes, because Fiddlesticks does that. But he doesn't know that we're warding our bushes, because we know they have a Fiddlesticks. He's going to try to ult from them. So, um, easy kill there for us to pick up on the Olaf. As for the last few times I was back, I'm just kind of building more items that are going to help me with the enemy team and going up against a Jace, as we know Jace is still a pretty strong champion. Um, I have a Warden's Mail right now, and I do have some cloth armor. It's going to be very helpful for me, giving me armor and, you know, a little bit of uh, regeneration of health. And if they attack me, I have a chance of slowing them down when they attack me. So kind of a double whammy when it comes to the slows. Here we're getting to a fight. Amumu goes in, uses his ultimate. I'm going to pick up a kill really fast on Jace to get rid of him. I'm going to be able to chase and go directly through all of the stuff that Jan is using because my ultimate is allowing it. I'm going to pick up a quick triple kill. And we're going to run out here real quick and find that Fiddlesticks is not paying attention. Amumu is going to get a bandage toss off. I'm going to run in and be able to pick up an easy quadra kill before we decide to push down this mid tower. So, um, kind of simple to pick up some kills. I have a lot of life, and as you saw while we got in that fight, Janna was unable to use any of her CC to stop me. Um, I just basically ran straight through her whirlwind, and then when she used her ultimate, once again, not affecting me because of my ultimate. So, uh, kind of an easy way to keep the gap closed on the enemy team. So, something to just remember when you're playing as Olaf. So, Got all that good stuff happening. Here they do come all up top to murder me. That does happen, but I think that's my only death this game because I was not paying attention. And uh, I think my ward had just ran out, unfortunately. So I did die. I'm back at base right now, though. And I know earlier in the game you could have picked up a heart of gold to be building towards the uh, omen that I am currently building towards, if you could not tell what I was doing. But as we know in Season 3 coming up in a future patch, some of these items will be changing for Olaf and for, you know, just champions in general with a lot of changes like heart of gold is being removed from the game if you did not know that if it hasn't already by the time you watch this build um so that's why i didn't build it right away because i'm going to try to get used to things that aren't going to be there for me so 
Here we are chasing, as you can see, Jace was basically trying to get away every time with that, but I kept slowing him. And with my frozen mount, I'm gonna be able to pick up an easy kill. That's if I can be the first one to get to it. Unfortunately, Corky does, so I didn't get the kill. But as you can see, I was slowing him down the whole time there to be able to keep up with him by landing those undertoes over and over. And when I was able to get close enough to him, the frozen mallet was able to do the work that it does. Um, luckily for me here, I am going to be able to pick up a kill that probably wasn't going to be mine. But that's okay, I'm just helping. So I'm going to slow down the vein, get knocked back. Nid's going to do some damage. I'm just going to reckless swing it to end it off. So... Uh, just gonna keep pushing forward with the team and keep building. Also, while I was back not too long ago, I did pick up some magic resist, which is gonna go towards another item that I am gonna be building, which is gonna be fantastic. Picked up a nice little assist there with a Moo Moo, because a Moo Moo is doing well this game, and that's gonna be definitely helpful for our team. Got a lot of gold right now. I can consider going back to base and buying, which I'm going to maybe do if we don't push, or maybe I'll steal buffs. And jungle. It's always smart to do that. So, remember to steal their jungle. Um, unfortunately, don't have flash on uh, Olaf. I don't typically take it because you have your ultimate, which can help you really avoid getting slowed and stuck. So, what I usually go with when I'm playing Olaf is some catch-up stuff. Like I said, gap-closing things. I go with Ghost and Ignite. It's great. If you want to go with Ghost and Exhaust, another solid choice as well if you want to help your team out in that way. So, that's what I usually go with when I am playing Olaf. Um, I can start to go over some of my runes and masteries. There's two different styles that I like to go when I'm playing Olaf, just kind of depending on the role that I need for the team. If I want to be going with more of an attack damage style, I go with a 2190 mastery page, kind of standard for uh, Olaf for the most part if you're going for that kind of uh, attack damage -y bruiser. But since I'm going more tanky, because Olaf, like I said, doesn't need to really worry about being tanky, or it helps when he is tanky because he doesn't need to worry about damage since he does do it regardless for the most part, then I will go with a 16-14-0 page. I call it my brawler page. It's going to help me be both give me some offense and give me some defense that's very helpful in uh, a few certain areas. So something to consider when you are Olaf. So, um, but those pages also do reflect my, mad, or my uh, rune page choices. If I'm going with the more damage-based page, I'll go with attack damage marks, armor seals, magic resist, per level glyphs, and attack damage quintessences, basically just helping me out early on with bonus attack damage to help if I get in any fights, and will add damage to my undertow. Um, but if I'm going that more tanky route, the ma or the rune page that I will go with for that is magic resist marks, armor seals, magic resist per level glyphs, and then move speed quintessences. And those move speed quintessences are even better for closing the gap when you hit them with your undertow, you're able to run up to them even faster, hit them with that reckless swing, and get that damage off. It's great for poking in lane, running to them, dealing that damage after you hit them with that undertow. So um, it's great. As you can see, it works fairly well for me when I do it that way. Especially, I mean, Jace had an advantage this game of having some decent range with his character. A lot of other top bruisers don't have that um, privilege with having a standard attack that they can deal range and then switch to a melee. Um, he had an advantage that he unfortunately did not utilize, so um, I took advantage of that by being able to land those undertoes and using my reckless swing to just deal the damage that I could, and that's going to definitely help me win a top lane every time. I have a great success rate with Olaf in top lane. He is a very fun champion, like I said. As you can see, the build's been progressing as I've been talking. Um, I got that mallet. I did get that force of nature and that omen. Don't forget about the passive on the omen to slow down the enemy team. Here we got a 3v5, but we're pretty confident with me and Amumu that we can kill them here if we start some kind of fight. I don't think I'm going to get many kills in this, but I'm going to be able to get in here and deal some m massive damage. Unfortunately, I didn't use my alt right away there, and I did get pushed around. Kind of taking the tower here. I'm going to run back and try to get over to this vein. Unfortunately, she goes invisible for that roll because of her ultimate. So I'm going to keep working on what I can. Pick up an assist on the Gragas. The rest of the team is now showing up for this fight. Picking up the assist on a Jace and another. Um, apparently no assist there for the vein. But you can see you can get thrown around in a fight and it doesn't really affect you. You can see the health regeneration I currently have going for me right now because of that force of nature. As you can see, the next item I'm building is a Hex Drinker into the Maw of Mount Mortius. And I typically fill up finish off the build with a guardian angel but if any of you have questions put those in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and other than that i'll just see all of you in the next build video